Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the previous episode, we talked through the left side panel. In this video, I'll explain the right side panel instruments and some of the other things that were left out in the last episode around the cockpit. Keeping the intro short, if you are enjoying these videos and content on my channel, please consider liking the video and hitting the subscribe button. It'll only take a second for you guys, but it'll help the channel immensely, which only means better content for everyone. With that, let's start the part two of episode six. First of all, there is an audio control system and marker beacon receiver on the top. This knob on the left controls the communication channel the microphones will be transmitting to. So COM1 and COM2 allow the microphone transmission to frequencies tuned in COM1 and COM2 respectively. EXT means the microphone will transmit to the cabin addressing system. So in case you want to talk to the passengers behind you. While on this, the incoming signal on that channel would also be on the main speakers. Then at the center, there's a speaker or microphone selectors. All these switches allow you to select which of these transmissions go to the cabin speakers and which ones go to the headphones. Top position means that the channel will be going onto the speakers. Mid position means off and bottom position on these selectors mean those channel will be going to the headphones. Now let's talk about the marker beacon receiver. There are three lights noted with letters A, O and M. A marker light will illuminate if you're traveling over an airway marker or a runway threshold. O marker light will illuminate when the airplane is passing over the outer marker. Outer markers are usually about four to seven miles from the runway threshold. M marker light will illuminate when the airplane is passing over the middle marker, which is usually about 3,200 feet from the runway. These are useful in IMC conditions to know where you are while approaching the runway. Now, ForeFlight and Navigraph has made these things very easy nowadays and this is just an old equipment. The high and low switches here adjust the marker beacon receiver sensitivity. If it is set to high, the marker lights start illuminating as far as one mile away from the marker. Then you can turn it to low which will give you a more precise positioning guidance. Next below the audio control system and the marker beacon receiver is the GNS530 which is an all-in-one GPS navigation and communication system by Garmin. Tutorial for this can be a whole another episode, but briefly speaking, the knobs on the left here can be used to tune the communication and navigation frequencies. We will be using this system for getting some really valuable information in our full flight videos, and it is a pain to manually put in a flight plan into this, at least in the sim, I would say, but fortunately we won't have to do that. Anyways, moving forward below the GNS530, there is the transponder. The main function of a transponder is to provide the aircraft identification and altitude information to the air traffic controllers. It also shares this information with the Traffic Collision Avoidance System or TCAS on the other aircrafts around it. Each aircraft is assigned a squawk code of its own by the air traffic controller and that is how it is identified in that airspace. There are different set squawk codes that you can put in to relay a particular condition in flight that I've listed here. The knob here needs to go to ALT or ALT whenever you start taxing and to stand by when you land. You press IDENT only when the ATC tells you to do so. This helps them identify the aircraft as it shows up blipping on their radar when you are IDENTing. Below the transponder we have the switch panel. We have looked at this in our previous episodes but let's quickly skim through each switch. First is the rheostat switch that controls the navigation lights and the right side panel lights. Next is the battery master switch and alternator switch. Then there is the fuel pump switch. Besides that is the landing light switch, rotating beacon and anti-collision light switches. And then the pitot heat switch. Important to keep the pitot tube warm in cold weather to not lose total pressure information. Last is the rheostat switch that controls the internal lights on the left side instruments. Now as we go further down in the cockpit, there is an exhaust gas temperature gauge. It shows the exhaust temperatures in the exhaust manifold. Just helps monitor the engine health and it is used to make sure that the EGTs are within the limit at all times. Besides that is the alternate air control lever. Now in the icing conditions, if air filter is clogged with ice, alternate air would have to be turned on. When it is on, the air filter is bypassed and unfiltered air directly enters the engine. This is of course not healthy for the engine in normal operation and should only be used if the filter is blocked due to ice formation. A good sign to look for to turn this on is icing on the leading edge of the wings. Now going to the right, there is the circuit breaker panel which we had talked about in the electrical systems episode in detail. Briefly, 
Each of these would pop out if the circuit is shorted for that system. It can be because of an overcurrent event. The maximum amount of current in amps that each of those circuit breakers can take before popping is noted by the number on those circuit breakers. Now once it pops, thorough diagnostics and maintenance needs to be done on that system to make sure that the underlying issue is fixed before actually pushing the circuit breaker back in. Above the circuit breakers is the fan control switch and the cabin temperature control. This is quite obvious and it doesn't matter in sim, but in the real world you can turn on the fans and control the cabin temperatures with these levers, similar to what you would have in your cars. Above that there is an alternate altimeter. We have talked about this a ton in the pedostatic systems episode and in the previous episode as well. It has the same functions as the primary altimeter but it can be used by the co-pilot and it can be tuned to get the altitude based on different reference pressure than the primary altimeter. So you can have your primary altimeter tuned to the QFE while the alternate altimeter can be tuned to the QNE to give you the pressure altitude. Moving on, on the left of the alternate altimeter is the ADF system. ADF means Automatic Direction Finder. If you have a NDB frequency tuned into this panel, the ADF indicator on the left panel will point to that non-directional beacon. As I've said previously, this type of navigation method is rarely used now, but is still taught to the pilots in case it is needed. I'm not going into a lot of detail on NDB navigation because we won't be needing it in our full flight. You will know how it works and how it can help though by the end of this series. Next above the ADF system is the DME or distance measuring equipment. This is really old DME equipment and most of the information that you get from here is redundant. You can get it all from the GNS 530 as well. So don't worry about it too much right now. Basically it shows the distance from the tuned VOR or ILS and it also calculates the ETA based on your current aircraft speed. I'll demonstrate it in the full flight videos of this series. Finally, there are two switches on the top. The one on the left brings up the iPad for the aircraft while the one on the right is the nav frequency selector for the DME. It lets you decide which VOR or ILS localizer you will get the distance from on the DME that we just talked about. If you look above the panel, you'll see a magnetic compass which is like a backup compass to all the vacuum system driven heading indicators on the panel. And above that is the outside air temperature indicator. The inside strip shows the OAT in degree Celsius and the outside strip shows the OAT in degree Fahrenheit. Looking at the bottom of the cockpit, there is parking brake here, rudder trim wheel here and the pitch trim wheel here between the seats. Trims are smaller control surfaces on the primary control surfaces like ailerons and rudders. Um, trimming the aircraft means basically moving the trim surfaces to stabilize the aircraft against the external conditions so that you don't have to hold on to the yoke throughout the cruise. The center lever here is the flaps lever. This will deploy the flaps if pulled up and retract them if pushed down. Flaps are usually used during takeoffs and landings to increase lift in those phases of the flight. On the left side bottom, there is a fuel tank selector lever. This airplane does not have a both option on it, so you'll need to keep switching tanks mid-flight every 15 to 20 minutes in order to maintain the weight balance throughout the flight. Further on the left below the window, we have the Emergency Transmitter Locator or ELT. It helps with finding the aircraft if it goes down. One needs to absolutely make sure that the ELT switch here is on auto position at all times while using the airplane. Now let's talk about the main three levers that control the propulsion of our aircraft. Leftmost black lever is throttle lever or power lever and this basically controls the amount of fuel going into the engine. Next blue lever is the propeller RPM control lever. Now from the name you would have guessed that it allows you to change the rotational speed of the propeller. But along with that what it also changes in order to maintain constant thrust is the pitch of the blade. As you pull down on the RPM at constant throttle or power, the propeller will try to generate the same amount of thrust at lower speed, which means it will try to increase the pitch to bite a bigger chunk of air. This is called a variable pitch prop, which is why we have this blue lever to control the RPM or pitch for very high efficiency over a large operating range. Constant pitch props can, on the other hand, operate at optimal efficiency only in a narrow operating range. Besides this, blue lever is a red lever which is the fuel air mixture control. 
If this is set to full, it means the fuel air ratio will be high. At higher altitudes, as the pressure reduces, the lever has to be pulled down to reduce the amount of fuel to maintain an optimal fuel air ratio. We will talk about the lever positions during different phases of the flight in the full flight videos, but this brief explanation was intended to give an idea of the functions of these levers and I hope that is clear now. I missed out the top line here on the last episode so let me go over that now. The red light here is the gear unsafe light which means it will be on when the gear is in transit, not fully retracted or deployed yet. Besides that is the light that will be on when the starter is engaged. Here there are three annunciator lights which will be on when those respective systems aren't functioning correctly. We've talked about this in the electrical systems video. You can test these three lights during pre-flight using this switch here. This is to make sure that those lights are operational and would illuminate when the system goes in op or has issues. The small red light here is a low voltage warning light. There is a separate light for this because this has to be extremely obvious in the cockpit. So that concludes the full cockpit panel guide. Next episode is going to be on how to use the autopilot on this airplane. And then finally after the cold and dark tutorial, we will be doing a couple of flights in episode 9 and episode 10. I hope this is helping out folks who are new to flight simming and the pros are enjoying it as well. So if you're into watching some educational content and if you enjoy watching my videos, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. I would highly appreciate the support and as always do leave a comment if you have any feedback, questions, corrections or video requests. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay kind.